don't get nervous. Uh, let's all uh, look in Mark chapter 7. Very unusual for me to do this, preach the same uh, chapter, but these two messages, gave, Lord give me these two at the same time the other day when I was reading and I just wrote them down and I'm going to give you what he gave me. It's amazing when that happens. I, I just thank God sometimes he'll just start speaking to you through his word. This is a story right after the one this morning. We're in chapter number uh, 25. I'm sorry, verse 25. Mark chapter 7 and verse 25. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, a demon, devil, heard of him, came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. That means she was not a Jew. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it under the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he, had, and he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. I want to preach tonight on the subject, praying the right prayer. Now, if, if we're going to pray, there's, there's, there's millions of prayers go up in this world every day. All over Islamic countries, all over Catholic countries, millions. Uh, there, there's millions of people today to hold beads around their neck and said, our, Hail Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now, us sinners, in the hour of our death. Hail Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. The there's millions of people who did this over in Islam and just, you know, they bowed those three times. And, uh, and you know, it's sad, but almost all the prayers in the, in the world today don't go any higher than that ceiling. If we're going to pray, let's pray a prayer that God will answer. If we're going to pray, let's pray a prayer that will get Jesus' attention. If we're going to pray, let's get an answer. And the day's going to come when you're going to need some answers. The day's going to come when you're going to be desperate. The day's going to come when it's going to be your daughter or somebody in your family in a hospital dying or in a desperate situation, life or death, or demonic even like this was, and you're going to want to get a hold of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I, I want to talk about this because I've heard this preached ever since I've been saved and said it many times myself, That, and, and I think sometimes we might get the wrong idea. Let's go over this story really quick here tonight and let me show you what was going uh, going on. Here's the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, uh, Jeremy, you just stand right here just a second and, and he's gonna represent the Lord and Michelle, you get over there and you be the, the woman come with, with the demon-possessed daughter. All right, he's over here. He's talking to all these Jews and all these, all these Pharisees and he's dealing with them and you gotta remember that Jesus was sent to, to the Jews, the, God's people, the Jewish people, and he was dealing with them. Everybody else besides Jews was Gentiles and were considered dogs. We're considered dogs. That's what, that's what me and you are, for, where we're saved, Gentile dogs. And this woman was a Greek, considered a dog, and, and he turned around there and talked to Brother Wayne, the Pharisee, and, and Jim and Peanut, the Sadducees, and, and Rhonda, the scribes, and, and he's all talking to them. Well, this woman here comes to him, and she comes over and says, Jesus, 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 said, my daughter, my daughter is, 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 is demon-possessed. Will you help me? And more or less, he just sort of said, look, I, I'm, I'm dealing with these people. Uh, these, the children get the, get the food, and I'm not going to take the children's bread and give it to dogs and turn around like that and just ignore her like that. And he just ignored her. And he thought, and everybody else thought, well, she'd just go home and, and just give up. 
And that's what most people would have done. Most people would have said, well, I tried, and he more or less told me to my face I was a dog and that I wasn't getting nothing, and so I just gave up. But there was something inside this woman. She wanted her daughter. You listen to me, ladies? She wanted it so bad. She wanted the Lord to help her daughter so bad. She said, but Lord... The children eat of the crumbs that fall, or the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. And he went, what'd you say? And it got his attention. Now that's what I want to deal with tonight. Whatever she did to get his attention. All right, y'all can be seated. And he said, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of your daughter. Now I'm going to tell you something, people. I'm interested in that kind of stuff right there. I want to know how to get his attention. I want to know how to get him to help my kids, my grandkids, our our church, our special, our needs, our our bus workers, our bus. So now, if if I'm going to do that, and so I I thought, you know what she done? She she hit the nail on the head. She, She just said the right thing. But it's more than that. I've even preached for years and heard preachers say, buddy, she said the right thing. And the Lord did say for this saying, but it was not all just for what she said. If it had been, everybody could have took that saying and run with it. Anytime anybody wants anything, they'd have said, but Lord, the the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table and could have got it. So it wasn't like punching the right button. You know what some people think about prayer? They think, it's, it, they think it's like you got a whole bunch of keys. I do this back there at the nursery. I do this back there at the bookstore sometimes. I got a whole line of keys, and a bunch of them look alike, and I stick that one in, and it don't work, and I stick that one in, and it don't work, and I stick that one in, and it, I hate to do that, don't you? You know, and Murphy's Law says the last one, you, the last one on your keychain will be the right one. Right, that right? And, and you stick another in, and it don't work. Finally, bam, it works. Now, that's not the way we're doing it. That's not what we're talking about here tonight. We're not talking about pushing the lucky button. We're not talking about like winning the lottery. Bam, I hit the right button, so I got my prayers answered. We're not like saying, Lord this and Lord that. Lord, the the children eat the crumbs. uh, The dogs eat the crumbs that the children don't eat. Bam, got it. Stuck the right key in there, and it worked. That's not exactly it. I'll tell you what it was, people. Now, I'm going to tell you this very simple and very plainly, and you've heard me say it a hundred times. When you need something from God, what matters is the attitude of your heart. You listen to me? The attitude of your heart. What got this woman's prayer answered was not just them words. Her attitude of her heart made her say them words and Jesus said, you've got it. The devil's gone out of your daughter. Go thy way. It wasn't like she just punched the button and stuck the right key in the lock and it worked. It wasn't like... uh, any, mini, miny, mo. you know, I found the key and I ain't got his attention. It wasn't, I, 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 I know what it is, but I can't really tell y'all. I tell you what, anybody in here tonight who's ever prayed and wrestled with God, I've done it many times when I've been in revival. I'd go a lot of times in revival meeting and we'd have a service the first night be dead and the second night be dead and I'd go back to my room and I'd pray and I'd fast the next day and I'd get down to business and all evening I felt like I was beating my head on that wall right there and I'd say oh God please oh God please and, it, and, and I couldn't keep my mind right and I couldn't keep my concentration right and I couldn't keep my thoughts right and the devil said you're just wasting your time and all of a sudden about three o'clock that evening I just say Lord I sure would appreciate it bam and I can tell he heard me have you ever done that I mean the old timers called it praying through you just say that right word and the Holy Ghost uses that right phrase I tell you what that is your heart gets in a condition so that the Lord can hear your prayers and brother he hears you when that happens I'm telling you tonight, the right way to pray is to get your heart right. Now, so I'm interested in that. I'm going to give you four things. It won't take just a minute and we'll be done. Number one, I'm going to tell you, I I looked at this scripture and I said, God, what made her pray that prayer? Number one, she did not question him. He turned around to her and he said, look, lady, 
I'm ministering to Jews right now and I can't take the children's bread and give it to dogs, Gentiles. You know what she said? Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. She did not question him. Listen, you'll never get nowhere with God if you got this attitude of, uh, I ain't gonna let no preacher talk to me like that. You just call me a dog. I'll tell you what, I'll never come and hear you again. I don't, you know what she done? She said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to tell you tonight, if you want God to answer your prayers, you know what you say to Jesus? You are correct. Don't ever say, I don't understand why my daughter got demon possessed. I've had her in church all her life. And she went out and got pregnant or got on drugs. And I don't understand that. She just said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever you say, Lord. Whatever you say. If you don't give me the time of day, that's totally up to you. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not I don't understand. Not I don't like the way you're doing things. Not I don't agree with what you said. She said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She didn't say no preacher's gonna talk to me like that. I ain't taking that from nobody. You don't have no right to tell me I'm a dog. It was just, yes, Lord. There's the way you get your prayers answered. Number two, she called him Lord. And I'm telling you tonight, brother, that word Lord means master. You want God to answer your prayers? You honor him as Lord. The Bible, you know how you get saved? The Bible said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I'm not preaching not, not that stuff they call lordship salvation and all of that where if you're not perfect, you're not saved. I'm not saying that at all. But I'll tell you one thing. When you come to him, you have to acknowledge him as Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. I'm telling you, glory to God, brother. I mean, she said uh, she fell down at his feet. She fell at him, his feet. She came down and she said, you're Lord. She said, your Lord, I, whatever you say, I'm going along with. It's just like when he was standing there a minute ago, she was standing there. He said, look, I can't take children's bread and give it to dogs. She just fell down and said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. She wasn't trying to con him. She didn't think she was gonna get nothing. She had already been turned down, but she bowed down and called him Lord anyway. I'm telling you tonight, there's your heart attitude. There's your heart attitude. Listen, you don't just praise God just cause you can get stuff from him. You praise him because of who he is, what he is, what he's done, what he's going to do. You just bow down and say, God, if you don't ever give me nothing, you're Lord anyway. There you go. You're getting somewhere if you can pray that and mean it. Number three, she took her place as a sinner. She took her place as a sinner. Yes, I am a dog. That's the right attitude. She didn't say, I'm not a dog. I've had people tell me. I've had one man come to hear me preach one time and he said, I'm an adult. Don't scream and yell at me. I thought, buddy, that's exactly what you need. You need somebody just to bless you out in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm telling you what, she took, she took her place as a sinner. She didn't look at it like, oh, I don't need you. I can go worship God. I don't have to have you. She took her place. She said, yes, Lord, you're right. I am a dog. I am a dog. I am a dog. And she meant it. You're getting somewhere when you get that attitude. You want to get somewhere with God? Really mean it. Don't just say it. Really mean it. I'm a dog. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She didn't say, uh, she didn't say, listen carefully to what I'm getting ready to say. Very short message, so don't you listen carefully for what I'm getting ready to say, people. I, I've been in church a long time. I've been to camp meetings, and I've been to independent Baptist churches and other kinds of churches, and mostly Baptist churches, and I've heard, I know a lot of people that, that have been in church for years and years and years, and they go to the meetings, you know, and they go around, and I've heard them stand up and say, God's been good to me, this old sinner, and, and they say that. They don't mean it. I know people, I, you can tell it. 
You ever met anybody that say, well, we're all, uh, we're all sinners and God's been good to us. They don't believe they're a sinner. I know they don't believe they've done nothing wrong 20, 30 years. It don't do no good to say, yes, Lord, the dogs eat of the crumb when you don't even believe you are a dog. You got to know and believe you really are a dog. Does anybody in here realize you really are a dog besides me? I'm a dog, brother. I'm a dog. Don't you put on this big act of worry. Listen, brother, God's not impressed with us trying to be spiritual and impress other people with, oh, we're holy and we're that. We're a bunch of Gentile dogs. I've heard preachers walk in. I've heard preachers walk in like and get up and brag about how they've lived right all these many years and how they've never done this, and how they've never done that. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with giving God the glory and the testimony, but you know what I mean. I heard a preacher say one time, he said, uh, uh, we was having camp meeting, and I was going to have him preach, and we had all the night services booked up, and I was going to say, brother, uh, I was going to have you come preach in one of them morning services, and you know what that preacher said? He told one of them other preachers, he said, I'm not a morning preacher. And what he meant by that is they just use them preachers that ain't that great in them morning services. And, and I'm a night preacher. I'm, bring me on when the big crowd's there. I don't stoop to the level of preaching in them morning services. I'm a great, and he didn't say that, but that's exactly what he meant. And I learned, Lord, have mercy, people. I t- you know what I said? I said, listen, if you ain't a morning preacher, you ain't no night preacher. You ain't good. If you're too good to preach to the morning crowd, you're not good enough to preach to the night crowd. I'm telling you, if you're not, if you're too good to preach to a small crowd, you ain't got no business preaching to a big crowd. A man that thinks he's too big and too spiritual and too great uh, to come and preach in a morning service or a Sunday school class or even on a bus. Yes, I said a bus. I'm telling you tonight, ain't got no business preaching at the youth rally. And I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. She took her place as a sinner. You know what my attitude ought to be? My attitude ought to be every Sunday morning if God gives me a chance to walk behind that pulpit and open that holy book and preach to you people, I'm, a, I'm honored. It's an honor before God. I don't deserve it. I'm a sinner. I'm no good. And if you get to thinking you're something big shot, you're something special, you ain't gonna get nothing from God. The Bible said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. And I'm not talking about just talking humble. She didn't say, yes, we're all dogs, but I'm really not, but I just say it. You know, uh, she, she meant it. She said, I am a dog. I understand. I'm not a Jew. I understand. She didn't say, you're pro-Semitic. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> These people, anti-Semitic, he's, you're, you're just too pro-Jewish. You're pro-Jewish. You're favoring those Jews. I, that's what makes me, everybody not like them people. You favor them. You say God favors them. You know what she said? God does favor them. Like it or love it. I know people right now that hate God and hate the Bible because God favored them Jews. You know what you ought to do? You ought to just say, if that's what you decided to do, Lord, hallelujah. I'll take my place as a Gentile dog, and if you'll let me in, I'll be grateful for it. You ain't gonna get nowhere saying, I, I, listen, the whole, half of this world tonight's anti-Semitic. Semitic, shim, like shim, anti-Semitic. Uh, 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 brown-skinned people, Jewish, and come from, from Jacob. And half the world hates them people. You know why the, you know why the Gentiles hate Jews? Because Gentiles love money and Jews can make money. And they don't like God's favor and blessing on this earthly, those earthly people like that. Do you know what this woman said? She said, look, I know, I know you're a Jew and I know you're sent to the Jews and I know you're there and I know I'm a dog, but I'll tell you what, if you'll just let me, when those children drop a few crumbs, I'll just pick it up off a floor like a dog and eat it. Buddy, you getting somewhere when you get that attitude. You getting somewhere when you get that attitude. She took her 
place as a sinner. She took her place as a sinner. Amen. She took her place as a sinner. Number four, I'm done. She was willing to take crumbs. She didn't have to have the whole biscuit. She didn't have to have the steak. Just your crumbs. She didn't look at it like, well, if I can't have what they have, I'll just not have, I ain't gonna be a part of something that where they're better than I am and other people are better. No, she said, look, I'm a dog and I know it. And if all I'm gonna get is some crumbs, that's fine with me. Give me crumbs. Listen, if you had a church full of people and we had that attitude, my Lord, there ain't no telling what God could do with people like that. An attitude of, you know what, preacher? I'm nothing and I ain't nothing special but if God will just give me a few crumbs, I won't be mad, Lord. I understand I'm a dog. I don't blame you if you don't want to help me. I'll take anything I can get. I'll be there, Lord. I'll serve you if I get a blessing. I'll serve you if I don't get a blessing. I'll be in Sunday school. I'll be there Wednesday night. I'll sorry my Bible. I'll pray. If you bless me, all right. If you don't, all right, I'll take a few crumbs. You get that attitude, brother. And the daughter, the, he said, the devil's gone out of your daughter. She didn't say, she said, she didn't say, if I can't eat at the table with everybody else, I'll just go home. If I can't, if you, you think they're better than I am, forget you. I'll go find me another religion. She didn't. She said, look, you're God. You decide what you're going to do. If you want to favor them people, it's your business. I'm a dog. I know it. You're right. If you got any crumbs for me, I'll take it. If you don't, I understand. Good attitude right there. And the Lord said, for that saying, cross dispensational lines before he ever died on the cross and ministered to Gentiles before the door was ever opened to them and said, the devil's gone out of your daughter. I don't know about you tonight, but there's been some times when you lose all, you just lose all your dignity and self-respect and fall at his feet and say, Lord, I'm a low-down dog. If you give me something, I'd sure appreciate it. If you don't, I understand I don't deserve it. You know, you're getting excited to get somewhere. That's the kind of prayer. What is that? It's the attitude of your heart. You can't trick him. You can't say, oh, yeah, Brother Danny said to say you're a dog and you'll get what you want. That don't work. It's the attitude of your heart. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Let's stand by our heads for prayer tonight.